Hey, so today we're going to be doing a tutorial on using uh, Reconstruct Me and uh, a new calibration patch in V4 called Calibrate Projector. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan in a scene, um, take that into V4, and then in V4 we're going to use this new patch to calibrate the, um, where the points in the 3D space are within the projector's plane. So the projection mapping problem is you've got um, kind of a projector which has, is defined by an output plane and a, and a point of view and we want to find out where 3D points are captured onto that plane in order to be able to send that image to the projector and it come out onto the real objects. So in order to kind of calibrate this, um, this frustum, this, this shape of this, of this view, um, we, need to, uh, we need to know some properties about the projector and this calibrate projector patch tells you those properties through a calibration routine which is much more instinctive than trying to tweak the properties yourself. Okay, so for this we're going to use Reconstruct Me and if you want to get the most recent version from their website, reconstructme.net you can download that. Um, I've got a copy here um, and basically what this program does is it scans in things in 3D using a 3D sensor like this or a Kinect. So you can use your 3D camera to, to move it around the object and it'll piece together all the data to create a detailed 3D scan. And it's really wonderful, the results. Um, they've kind of got um, a smoothed off edge and everything. So you need to be quite careful about um, having two small details you want to capture in because they might get smoothed over. Um, but you can also do some tweaking if you want in the configuration folder. Okay, so I did some tweaking in there for this project, but it's not really important um, because obviously it's quite specific here. So you start Reconstruct Me with um, these batch files down here. Now these real-time ones use the graphics card in real-time to figure out the relative pose of the, um, of the 3D sensor and piece together the volume. Um, whereas these record ones, they just record and then later on you process the data on CPU. So if you've got really big data sets, you might want to go for that. Um, for this one, I've kind of tweaked my values so they should be quite high resolution for the area I want, but still real time is fine. But like I said, you don't have to worry about tweaking that until you've had a few, your first few tries with this. So first thing that comes up is, do you agree to our license terms when you run this batch? And the answer to that is obviously yes. Um, but what this means is you can't use it for commercial purposes. If you've got a commercial project and you do want to use this scanning technique, then please consider um, getting in contact with the developers and giving them some, giving them the, the fee that they asked for. All right, so there's some simple controls for this. I'm just going to move this window over here. Um, basically, you start scanning by pressing P, and you can reset by pressing R. So if I, um, if I move it around now, press P, it's going to reset that again. And you can see, like, it starts piecing together the 3D model, and it fills in, like, all the shadows and gaps. And you've got to move it steadily, otherwise you might... Um, it might lose itself, and if it loses itself, what you have to do is bring it back into where the view was before, and that will kind of like refind itself. Um, right, so I'm going to um, start my scan off up here for this, and I'm going to make sure there's no rotation with respect to the scene, because um, this will also change the, um, the axes. So I press P to start. Steadily move it around. I don't want to get too much detail in the scan because it will overwhelm BBBB if I do. So I'm just going to move this around a bit like this. Oops, sort of lost it. So I can press Escape to finish. So the controls were um, P to start the scan, P to stop the scan, Escape to finish. And then when you get to this point, it'll say, do you want to save the content? You say yes. And you ask you for a file name. I'm going to make this um, uh, um, a PLY file at first. Um, actually, um, so we'll just make this a 3DS file to do the quick route. So we're going to call this uh, scene.3ds. 
Okay, and then it's just going to take a little while to um, export that. Right, and then if you look in the bin file now, the folder room before, we've got the scene.3ds. Okay, now for this workshop, um, there's a link with this video, and this video is with the link as well, um, to the workshop files, which you will download. And that's basically this set of files. And there's some folders in here, tools, subpatches, modules, media example. Um, and then there's two main patches, calibrate and runtime. Now what we want to do with this scene.3ds is we, um, we're just going to drop it into the media folder. So we'll go over here, scene.3ds, and then we're just going to drag and drop that scene.3ds onto conv3ds. And that will convert the 3ds file into a .x in the same folder. So you see now we've got the scene.x. And that, the file size of that should be growing. I'm just going to pause the video now because that will take um, up to five minutes to process that. Okay, so what we've done so far is we um, downloaded Reconstruct Me, we uh, looked in the folder, uh, found the executable to run, ran it, used p to start, p to finish, and escape to end, yes to save, file name.3ds. It also accepts PLY and um, I think OBJ file formats. And if you do want to look into changing your properties of the scan, have a look in config and change the text files here. And you can see which text file it's running by opening the bat file. Okay. Right, so when you open the patch, it should look a bit like this. You've got at the top left, you've got this world picture. I'm just going to move myself back on. So at the top here, you've got um, um, uh, basically like a camera view where you can um, you can see what's going on in the world. Um, also, on the um, there's another renderer which is supposed to be coming out on your projector. Now. The two renderers sit inside um, respective patches, so I think, um, yeah, inside mesh select points, there's the world renderer, so that's the, this one at the top up here, and inside uh, renderer projection is the renderer which is going to come out on your projector. Now for this tutorial, I've just added another renderer in here, so you can see a copy of it on the screen. So I'm just going to make this a lot bigger. Right. Now, if you've got any um, points in this table up here, you can right-click clear to get rid of them. So, for instance, if there's like anything, you can use clear. Uh, this table is a new form of dealing with data in V4, especially things that you want to be able to save, manipulate, edit, view, um, without having to worry about frame delays and using multiple different mechanisms on a kind of almost an animated data set. Instead, everything's quite static, and it all the data is stored in this table node and if you've got autosave selected it'll automatically save everything out to an XML whenever you make a change and then you can make changes downstream like such as an insert node or you can get all the data out using an as value and the calibrate patch um, has got lots of things to deal with the data of the calibration which is the correlation points which are each defined by a point in world space and a point in projector space um, and then it's got the calibrate projector, which deals with the actual calibration, which takes those world points and projection points and creates view and projection matrices. And down at the bottom, we've got like um, a little test scene, which comes out so you can actually see what we're doing while we're calibrating, and also a mechanism to save the matrices. So what we do is, um, first we can clear this table, right click up here, and that'll clear that. And then we go into this mesh um, patch at the top. And um, first thing we do is um, select our scene. And then we have to get the transform right so we can actually get this mesh so it's lined up with the center of our world. Now, if you come in from Reconstruct Me, the scale generally here should be 0 0.001 because um, Reconstruct Me is exporting in millimeters and uh, we want it to be roughly in single, single units. So it's 0 0.001. If you're coming from Cinema 4D, sometimes you need to go 0 0.0001. There you go, it comes in. Right, so that scales around about right. Um, now all I need to do is get the rotation correct. The rotation already looks roughly right. I'm just going to rotate it on the y-axis so it faces forwards. And then I'm going to translate it in. So the center of the scene is roughly the center of the world. Right, that looks good. 
Now, here at the bottom, I've got a little preview of what's coming out on the projector. Because um, you can't see my projector at the moment, and also it's not particularly very clear through the other camera, I'm just putting this preview up so you can see what's happening there. Right, so once you've made this, these changes to the mesh, make sure to save them, Control and S, because that then will save this transform and this mesh file name. So you want to actually save this patch and hide it. You don't really want to save anything else. Okay, now what we do now is we um, we move our view around so it's kind of roughly where our um, roughly in line with our model. So you, you're looking at your projector, look at the image and how it comes up on the model, and you're kind of roughly moving into place very approximately. And then we start selecting points. So to add a point, you use the world view, the world renderer. Put your cursor over a point on the model and press enter. We do that for maybe five points to start with. Okay, now let's just do the sixth point. Makes it much more stable. Okay, now if we want to edit one of these points, what we can do is um, we can drag around and that will change where it is in world space. If we want to do that more accurately, we can hold down shift and that will zoom in. So we can say, okay, that one's going to be here, or we can put it here. It's quite a funky calibration. Um, and go and do that. And then if we press space, it actually resets where that point is. In, um, in projection space with respect to the camera. And also that means, um, so there you go, that will bring our calibration back. So go in, edit the points, come out, press space. Just go at this point. Um, shift and tab will go backwards through points. Tab with tab will go forwards. Also selecting points here, we'll select the point in before. So tab and the window selected tab, shift and tab. Enter to add a point, backspace to delete a point. And we can also delete points here using the um, table controls. Right, so as we added enough points, the mesh went from red to silver, which means that we're now using the calibration. So I'm going to go through these points one by one, starting at zero, and I put my cursor out over my projector and drag, and that moves it in the projection space. So now I'm just going to turn my camera. So you can see this happening. So go through one by one. And I want to just move that point out on my real object. So it corresponds with the point I selected in the reconstruct me mesh. If you want to see more closely where it was, I can press shift to zoom into the world. And as you get very close, it might get flickery when there aren't that many points, but when there are a lot of points, you basically uh, you'll see it swerving. Now, there were just five points, it's actually very accurate. Um, I'm just going to show you that you can now add another point in if you wanted to. So, you try and find a point in the calibration which isn't as accurate as you'd like. Um, so, down here, I can see like um, this thing doesn't look very accurate. So, in my world view, I'll put my cursor over there, press enter to add a point, move it into position, and calibrate it.
Let's do that again on this point here. So um, even with five points, we were able to get pretty decent calibration. Um, and then as we added more points, we were able to fine tune different areas of the 3D scene. So now we can export these matrices by using this little patch down here, save view projection, and we can load it into a different patch for runtime. So just right click here, and then I'm going to quit this. First, I'm just going to pause. Okay then, if we go back into the workshop folder and run runtime now, um, this will automatically load the matrices we just saved in the Calibrate patch, and we'll create a um, little test scene, which you can see now when we're in here. And if I just turn my camera back on, you can see what that's like. Okay, and that's everything. I mean, obviously, making content is more important than the calibration in general. Um, and this tutorial doesn't really cover anything about making content. Um, but hopefully, now you can see that like even complex scenes can be um, can become like controllable if you using these like new scanning techniques. Okay, so good luck with everything. And if you've got any questions, give me an email. Um, if there's any problems with the distribution which comes with this workshop, then just um, yeah, give me an email and we'll fix it up. Alright, good luck. See ya.